It's time for me to mess around with the Fiverr authors and the gigs that they are offering. It's been a few months since I've done a video like this. The last time I created a video on Fiverr authors offering gigs to teach me cybersecurity. This time, doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be cybersecurity them. <laughs> that was a bad joke. <laughs> That was my failed attempt at being relatable to this audience. Mm. This time, I will be developing my own little virus. We're gonna call this malware. No, actually, we're gonna call it what I like to call annoyanceware, because let's be dead honest. Can a script kitty like me develop a real sophisticated malware or virus? Annoyanceware, the act of developing annoying software and virus kids. Cause I'm an IT legend. <laughs> no. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if these authors who are offering virus removal gigs are legitimate, and are they doing the right practices to remove a virus off of a machine. Now, before we do this, we have to develop this little virus, but if you could care less about the technical details and the endeavors that I had to go through, you can skip to this part of the video. If you care about my technical ventures through developing this virus, let me give you a bit of insight. I suck at coding, but let me go ahead and show you what I did to try to create this virus. Okay, so my goal is to develop a virus. Actually, not really a virus, but a small piece of code which would pop up a big red message box with a message in big red text with an audio clip running in the background. It would be named dboo.exe virus in honor of my friend. Rest in peace, friend. And would be in a continuous loop staying persistent, meaning you ain't closing it from the task manager, my friend. So at first, I was thinking about writing a program in C++, because, you know, C++ is much better to create an executable than other languages. If you know me right now, you know, I'm, I'm a Python script kitty, so I have nothing but troubles with Python and executable. Okay, but not to get off track. So, my mindset was ready, glasses on, and I went ahead and started my development process. But I ran into hella troubles. First off, it took me like four hours to even create a C++ development environment to compile my code because, you know, Windows, it's gotta be like that. Windows be like that. And after like hours upon hours upon hours, I finally got a message box to appear, but C++ code be hella hard and I don't understand a thing. So after typing my concerns on Twitter, because pff, that's what you do when you can't figure stuff out, I decided to clear the table and start new with C instead of C++. I spun up a VM on my Windows machine because C is so much better and so is Linux. With my new ambition set on the goal, I tried my hardest by implementing the JTK plus three GUI development environment and even though I had the dialogue box working with the red text, the audio wasn't working. So at this point, I said, I'm done with the video and I'm moving on to better things. But then I pick my friend and I say, yo friend, uh, I have all these frustrations. I, I, my, I feel like my I'm stupid. And he told me that I could just literally do this. Import windows.h library and then type in message box function followed by the message that I wanted to create and boom. So after all of these ventures, I finally had my code and audio ready. To establish my method of persistence, I went ahead and used the deprecated, yet still used, Windows 7 operating system, and I stumbled upon an article written by an individual on fuzzy security on simple methods to establish persistence with programs on Windows. I decided to use the method of subverting Windows login, this is what the method's called, uh, by placing my dboo.exe file in front of the user init.exe registry key, which defines which programs are run by Windows logon when a user logs into a system. All I needed to do was add this line with administrator privileges on the command line and boom, I have established persistence upon startup. My plan was almost done. All I had to do was make sure my VM was stealthy and hidden and so I followed a few videos by Jim Browning on YouTube and I was good to go. Alright, let's be honest. That process was really dodgy and it was everywhere. Now, if you are interested in developing or even analyzing malware, my buddy Overflow has a few courses that he hosts on his own that he has developed. I have checked these malware courses out and they're actually they're really good and they're a lot better than my really stupid Flex. process. Using the discount link, Grant Collins, will get you 10% off on the course and not only that, but all proceeds from my portion using that link uh, are going to be going to those who are affected, uh, who have been impacted by what is currently going on in the world right now with coronavirus. So if you are interested in analyzing and maybe developing some malware, as well as helping a cause, you can uh, use that link down below. All right, I've developed my little, little tiny program. Here it is in full working mode. Debo debo. Debo not bad. I know it's pretty pathetic, pretty dumb, no red text, 
but that's okay. Now it was time to select the lucky winners. Really not winners, but Fiverr authors. The first author was a guy who went by the name This, and he was offering technical support for computer, virus removal, and PC speedup. He had 20 reviews with five stars, so I figured, this dude knows what he's doing. So we hopped on TeamViewer, connected to the machine, and let the virus removal process begin. Hey, all right, he's on it, boys. He's opening up the task manager, and he's seeing if he can do it. The Fiverr author proceeded to open up the DirectX diagnostic tool in the Windows run bar and go to display settings and as you can see I'm a stupid idiot there it was VirtualBox graphics adapter that was a dead giveaway but to my surprise he didn't see it here was my reaction to that Oh yeah. He went ahead and uninstalled a taskbar manager hide program, which allowed me to hide my little, little virtual box icon in the system settings in the taskbar. So he uninstalled that, we restarted the machine, and then he proceeded to download antivirus software, specifically Kaspersky's uh, scanning tool. And finally, we were able to connect via voice to chat with him so I could explain my issues and my problems with what was going on. So what you were looking for when you got this virus on your system? I was in trying to install a random, like a, some program on the internet, which would help me. Um, it was it was just a, like a random game, and uh, like a, a and I I downloaded the game and it came up with like this taskbar program. Well, let me tell you something. I'm an idiot. I shouldn't. I was trying to come up with some sort of excuse for how I could tell him that I downloaded this random program taskbar executable. But anyway, while he while I was explaining how I got this little virus, he ran SFC scan now command, which will scan all protected file systems on the system 32 and see if anything has been corrupted. While this was being conducted and the Skursky total security tool was being downloaded, he was telling me about some common methods in terms of how viruses get onto my machine. But then I asked him, have you ever heard of the Dibuda virus? Dot, dot, dot. So okay. have you have you ever heard of this this type of virus? Dibu no, no, I never. Like I have seen some viruses which work like this, which shows you pop up and just give you some audio, but not this kind of because it's, it's a little bit it's, uh, like when I heard that voice, I never heard this kind of audio oh, before. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. It's so it's it's a little bit creepy, also. <laughs> yeah, it is a little <laughs> creepy. It is a little weird. Yeah. It's like Dibu Da. I don't know, like who comes yeah. up with those types of things. So the Dibu Da virus. It's an original new virus. Ha! Ah, nah, just joking. That's stupid. While we were chatting about the Dibu Da virus, I asked him what got him into computers and just technology in general. And he was doing this, and he went into the System32 folder. And once again, I slipped up with my selfiness on the VM. Uh, there was a little virtual box icon as you could see uh, it said vbox service and i was like oh shoot he's gonna see that so every single time he would scroll up i would scroll down and not only that but you could see the dbudavirus.exe in the system 32 so in hindsight i should have probably used a better method but i wanted to use a very common well-known method we had a long chat about coronavirus and what was going on around the world and then eventually I told myself that I'm finished. I don't feel like waiting another hour and a half because I'd waited about an hour and a half to have this uh, Kaspersky total security tool downloaded. So I just went ahead and told him where it was. I told him my thoughts on his virus removal process. Told him some things that he was doing well. And well, that was basically it. Of course, removing a virus in, in this sense is really not that hard. Just kind of go through certain procedures. But we were done. So. Finally, I decided I'm done with this machine. I'm going to restore it, and boom, new Fiverr author. Fiverr author number two. The next author was a guy who went by this name. He was offering services to fix Windows PC or laptop, and again, he had 25 five-star reviews. Again, we hopped on TeamViewer and connected to the machine. All right, he's in. He's in, boys. He is in. Whoa, take a look at that hair, guys. That's hair of a legend. Hair of a legend. <laughs> uh, hold on, sir. That would help me um, win some money. Uh, but I couldn't win. I but before you know it, um, I was installing this this software, and then I got this little pop-up window here. It says Dibu Da, and whenever I click it, 
it has an audio in the background and it's really creepy and weird. After I told this individual about this virus, he suspected that I downloaded the cracked version of a software and that because I downloaded the cracked version, I received this Dibuda virus. Here a game whatever, I think you installed the cracked software which have uh, infected uh, with virus. It's kind of thought for this individual after identifying this virus and suspecting I got it from this crack was to actually go ahead and just completely wipe my machine from Windows 7 and upgrade to Windows 10, but I didn't want to upgrade to Windows 10. Install Windows 10. Are you okay if I install Windows 10 on your PC and clean the whole virus? Um, actually, right now, sir, I I would I would like to stay with Windows. Uh, seven. After many times of telling this individual that I didn't want Windows 10, he went ahead and decided to start his virus removal process on Windows 7. He uninstalled the version of malware bytes that I had on this VM. He uninstalled the taskbar hide program, which once again shouldn't have included that, but that would have given away the VM. And then he went ahead and downloaded the best antivirus software, which was Avast. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You're installing Avast, Avast and AVG. Those are antivirus softwares, which have actually been flagged as spying on you and selling your user data. A few months ago, a huge, a ton of stories came out. So yeah, Avast, not a good antivirus. AVG, not a good antivirus. And it was the cracked version. So not only was I installing anti antivirus, but I was installing a cracked version, which, you know, I already had the, I, he suspected that I downloaded virus from the cracked version. So I thought it was a little bit confusing. After that, I had to stop him and tell him, hey, you know, Avast is a, a good company that has been flagged for spying on you. And it's not a good company so that when he is fixing computers in the future, he knows this for future reference. And that was it. He was a very kind guy. He took the advice that I had uh, told him. He didn't know about the news about Avast. Of course, I mean, absolutely no attack towards this Fiverr author or his gig. I think he did a good job of first assessing the issues, so very good job there. Um, but just as a heads up, don't <laughs> use the vast. That was basically it at that point. Well, that was the experiment. I left them both good reviews on Fiverr and told them some things that they could do a little bit better. And yeah, I was basically done. So this experiment goes to show you that uh, and validate that I am script kitty myself because pff, did you look at the code that I wrote? Meh. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting experiment, I guess. <laughs> it left me lots of money charges on the bank account. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next time, have a good day. Be Buddha.